RME's ADL24 Pro SE comes with an unusual digital RIAA mode, removing the need to use an external phono preamp in front of the ADI2's line inputs. Turntables with moving magnet cartridges can be connected straight to the ADI24 Pro SE. This video will explain in detail how RME's mode is designed, operates and measures. This block diagram shows how a discrete phono preamp is typically constructed. The input of the phono preamp serves as a load to the moving magnet cartridge. Industry standard calls for 47 kilo ohms of impedance and capacitance of 100 picofarad. Varying the capacitance will change the frequency response in the treble area. A too low resistive load, on the other hand, will reduce the output level and also change the frequency response. Running a moving magnet cartridge into a microphone preamp is therefore not a good idea. The low level output of the cartridge, about 5 millivolts, needs to be amplified to become usable with an RCA or line level input. Required are about 40 dB of amplification, equal to 100 times. So 5 millivolts turn into 500 millivolts. Due to the mechanical limits of the LP system, a special equalization curve is used when cutting the vinyl disc. The so-called RIAA equalization curve attenuates bass up to 20 dB and amplifies treble by up to 20 dB. On playback, it needs to be inverted, amplifying bass and attenuating treble, resulting in an overall flat frequency response. This specification was introduced in 1954 by the Recording Industry Association of America, hence the name RIAA. Due to the multitude of requirements, strictly analog preamp designs face a series of challenges. First, slight deviations in component values can introduce variances to the RIAA curve, so the EQ correction is not done properly. Second, deviations in component values can introduce differences between left and right channel, both in amplitude and frequency response. Third, the high amount of amplification in combination with the EQ filter often causes unexpectedly high distortion values. And fourth, the input gain is typically not adjustable. As the exact output voltage of the cartridge is not known, the circuit must have a lot of headroom to avoid clipping at possible high levels. The analog to digital conversion chip used within the ADI24, a selected ESS ES9822 Pro, has an interesting feature, a small DSP called audio signal processor that can be used to process audio, like adding a digital RIAA filter curve. For various reasons, we were not willing to add another dedicated analog input stage for moving magnet cartridges into the ADI24. Instead, the question was, can the existing line input stage be used even with moving magnet turntables? To use the ADI24 Pro as a professional measurement front end, the line inputs have a higher input impedance than usual in order to achieve more accurate results. It measures 45 kilo ohms unbalanced, which is as good as the default 47 kilo ohms for moving magnet cartridges. The load capacitance measures 150 picofarad. More on this later. The line input stage of the ADI2 series is renowned for its very low noise values, even at the lowest setting of plus 4 dBU. This has been further optimized down to a reference level of plus 1 dBU at a signal-to-noise ratio of more than 120 dB. But how will the input stage of the ADI24 perform as a phono preamp in real-world terms? Plus 1 dBU equals 869 millivolts. The typical reference level of a moving magnet cartridge is 5 millivolts or minus 43.8 dBU. 120 dB of signal-to-noise ratio minus the aforementioned 43.8 dB results in at least 76.2 dB of signal-to-noise ratio for the digital phono preamp. Knowing that many analog phono preamps won't reach better values and as soon as the needle drops, we're talking about 55 dB signal-to-noise ratio, this value seems to be fully sufficient. 
The ADI's line input circuitry can handle very high levels, far higher than typical moving magnet voltages. The analog clipping happens even higher than the ref level of plus 1 dBU, which is not an analog limit, but the digital limit of the ADC. Therefore, the headroom in this part of the design is about 45 dB. No way to get in trouble here. To achieve a maximum signal-to-noise ratio in RIAA mode from the existing circuit, the three reference level gain relays are all switched on, achieving an additional reference level of minus 2.5 dBU, which results in a 3.5 dB higher input sensitivity without added noise. The final signal-to-noise ratio now reaches values up to 88 dB, with still 15 dB of digital headroom. Here is a simplified block diagram of the final implementation. The turntable is connected via simple RCA to TS adapters and sees the expected load. The buffer amp, which handles the reference levels by amplification and attenuation, is set to amplify by 7 dB at highest input level, which means a gain setting of plus 14 dB in RIAA mode and 10.5 dB in all other gain settings. The input level of 5 mV turns into 17 mV and reaches the ADC, resulting in 75 dB signal-to-noise ratio. The audio signal processor in the ADC now digitally amplifies the signal here by 26 dB with a headroom of 15 dB. In real-world usage, one will use a higher gain setting to have the music only a few dB below full scale, not 15. But for the sake of comparison with analog preamps, let's stay at minus 15 dBFS and look at the full signal path and processing. This diagram shows a full overview of all functions implemented. The digital path within the ASP includes digital gain, DC and subsonic filters, the RIAA EQ and mono bass. In a later stage, all digital audio reaches the main DSP and its parametric equalizer. Here is a detailed view of the signal processing. Digital gain amplifies the low-level input signal so that it reaches usable levels. The DC filter removes DC components of the analog input stage, the ADC and some of the unavoidable subsonic junk of the turntable before the RIAA EQ heavily amplifies exactly those frequencies. That brings us to the mono bass effect, also called elliptic EQ, which reduces rumble noise, low frequency groove noise and acoustical feedback from speakers to the turntable, with only marginal changes to the original sound. Very useful to have. Finally, the parametric 5-band equalizer can be used in multiple ways to further process and fine-tune the result. For example, with a freely adjustable rumble filter or a treble adjustment to compensate capacitance effects of the cartridge. The manual includes all relevant tech specs, but to show how good the ADI24 Pro SE handles turntables, we need to compare it to other solutions. The following screenshots show dedicated phono preamps measured by Audio Science Review. Compare these measurements, shown on the left side of the screen, with one of the ADI24 Pro, right side of the screen, measured in the exact same way. Obvious differences, no hum, no distortion and very low noise. To reproduce the measurements absolutely identical, the ADI2 Pro 4SE was set to preamp mode with a signal path analog in, a D conversion, DA conversion, and finally measured at its analog outputs. The DA conversion and analog output path is so transparent that the measurement result is exactly the same as directly after a D conversion. Comparing the ASR Synat ranking of all measured units, the ADI2 Pro 4SE would easily enter the top group of 32 tested devices. The ADI24 Pro SE easily proves that digital RIAA works perfectly when done correctly. It is also very easy to use and set up, with lots of useful options included. Additionally, you get a 30-band analyzer and true single sample level meters for evaluation of the really needed headroom. 
With the ADR24 Pro SE, digitizing long play records and singles at up to 192 kHz sample rate is possible in the most professional quality you can imagine. Check it out.